I'm interested in the brain mm-hmm. and we've gone from we've gone from the the role of creatine it seems to have multiple roles mm-hmm. um anti-inflammatory anti-catabolic right um it's obviously important for producing ATP regener- mm-hmm. you know regenerating the ATP um what about the brain What's super exciting. Like this is such an emerging area. So from the neck up, I think the next 20 to 30 years will be focused almost entirely on this. So um, our liver produces creatine and our brain actually is unique. It also produces creatine, but the brain is very resistant. We have the blood brain barrier for a really important reason. Um, And the brain says, you know what? Circulation, we don't need creatine in the blood. We're making our own. So an individual getting adequate sleep, no chronic disease, no metabolic diseases, no neurodegenerative diseases is producing adequate amounts of, of brain creatine. It could be as as little as one to three grams. Um, now, our brain is small from stature, but it uses 20% of our daily energy. And of course, as we all know, when you're really tired, sleep deprivation, running around chasing your children, most people that I know are really uh, metabolically stressed, primarily from a cognition perspective. And that's where creatine seems to have the best lines of evidence. Sleep deprivation, hypoxia, I jet lag. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning and flew down. So I'll be taking a really high dose today to hopefully offset the the chance of inflammation or uh, cognitive decline. Um, So when we look at the totality of emerging evidence, it's split. Some studies don't see any effect. But the ones that do is in a population where they're either mentally fatigued sleep deprivation, or during times of aging, and that's where memory comes into play. And the common denominator seems to be the more that the brain is stressed, the more creatine seems to come to the rescue. Same analogy from a muscle and bone perspective. So uh, we can talk for hours just on the brain, and uh, it's a very exciting area for sure. Yeah. So the brain is stress. So so brain aging. Brain okay. aging. Older adult. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's aging is a stress on the brain. It is. So supplementing with how much creatine can improve cognition in, let's say, older adults. Yeah. As little as about five grams has been shown to have some potential, but this is interesting. I just you know, 20 minutes ago said that the loading phase wasn't needed for muscle. The best studies for the brain look at 20 grams a day for at least a week. So now you're in a conundrum. I'm looking at muscle, bone, and brain. And the theory here is that since the blood-brain barrier is very resistant to creatine, and unfortunately, we have this really important glial cell called astrocytes, which are the most, the biggest in, in our uh, central nervous system. It sort of acts as a filter from our blood into our cells, and it really determines what gets in. And it says, hey, foreign pathogens, no, you're not getting into the, the neuron or the cell. Uh, so unfortunately, they don't have the creatine transporter or doorway. So that's why uptake into the brain is very blunted. So the thought is to get an improvement in brain creatine stores, you need longer duration of supplementation or higher dosages. So the best lines of evidence using MRS have shown that higher 20 grams a day seem to be the most viable. There's been a single study looking at about four grams a day, but it took three months to accumulate in the brain. Uh, Unlike our muscle, which acts as like a vacuum, it sucks in all the creatine from our blood. Our brain says, no, 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 I'm only going to take what's in our blood, i.e. supplementation, when need be. So that's why sleep deprivation seems to have the best lines of evidence or mental fatiguing challenges. Yeah. Okay, so let's, if you're you're someone like myself Mm -hmm. who's been supplementing with five grams a day for a year. Okay. That's enough time for it to eventually accumulate into the brain. Presumably. Yeah, like that low dose. Remember, you need about two to three grams. Now, I'm not sure about your diet, but you're going to need that just to maintain your muscle. And then comes down to your genetics. What's more in jeopardy? Is it your bones or brain? So again, the 5% that's remaining throughout the body is in your testes, heart, uh, uh, bone, Uh, and brain. So for me as a biological male, it's going to different areas compared to you as a biological female. But my hope is, wait a minute, let's go a bit higher. So we're sort of sort of uh, checking off all the boxes. My guess is five grams, you'd have a small increase in brain creatine content. Um, But if you have a really non stressful life, the brain says, no, go to the bone or we'll excrete it down the toilet. But if you're metabolically stressed, it's begging for more. I'd like you to be probably higher than five. But I think it'd be interesting to look at some pre-post MRS scans and um, 
it, it's viable it could be there. The study that did four grams was in long COVID. These individuals, brain fog, fatigue, headaches, things like that. So the brain was really begging for recovery. Yeah. Okay, so you just mentioned the best studies showing any improvement mm-hmm. in. And when we're talking about improvement, we're talking about cognition. We're talking about yep. like memory. Memory. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You said 20 grams, right? Which yeah. is definitely what I don't want, mm-hmm. the the swelling yep. part of that, right. um, which happens around 20 grams. Yes. Yep. So have there been studies looking at 10 grams? Is that like a sweet spot? The seminal study was out of Germany, and they did four, two versus four versus 10. And this is where I personally take at least 10. And they use MRS studies, and they only they showed that about 10 doubled the percent increase in brain creatine content, but they also measured it in the gray matter, the white matter, and I believe the thalamus, and it all improved by about 10%. Now, it was a small sample size because the run on MRS is super expensive. So statistically, it wasn't there, but the percent improvements were, were a lot higher. And when you look at all the other data, 10 grams seems to be a very viable dose to not only check off the box, definitely for muscle. We're now checking off the box for brain and now we're, or sorry, bone. And then we're also checking off the the box for uh, brain as well. So I personally take about 10 grams a day on average, but during times of metabolic stress, sleep deprivation, or uh, um, jet lag, I'll increase it to 20. So today I will take 20 grams because I flew down from Canada. I'll take 20 grams again tomorrow. But when I get back home, I'll decrease it back down to 10. If any is being excreted down the toilet, I'm totally fine with that. Creatine is very cost effective, but I want to make sure I'm maximizing all my abilities. And the immune system, especially in Canadian winters, is really heightened and uh, activated. And I really have found in the last few years, I'm I'm not getting flu-like symptoms Uh, Hopefully that's from exercise or diet, but uh, who knows, maybe creatine is helping because there is some anti-inflammatory effects. You you, you went to another area that I definitely want to talk about, but like before that, so 20 grams then you're saying acutely when you're in this Mm -hmm. sleep deprived state, jet lag, you know, let's say fill in the blank type Mm -hmm. of, you know, extreme stress. Um, Is that immediate? So let's say like you you miss, you're like up late, you're up late one night and you have something to do the next morning or the next day, you have to be like on your game. Mm -hmm. If you take that 20 grams either at night, would you take it at night, like before you go to sleep yes. or in the morning or does it matter? And will it have an effect immediately? Yeah. And I love learning. And this is just so 20 grams might be too low. It's surprisingly your viewers. So another study came out of Germany. They did is very elegant design. It was a crossover and they gave 0.35 grams per kilogram. So even if you're only 70 kilograms, that's 25 grams in a bolus dose. And they measured it for 21 hours of sleep deprivation. And it really improved memory, cognition, and it increased brain creating content. So that high a dose not only does it get into your plasma or blood really quickly, probably in about three hours it's peaking. When your brain is stressed, it's being taken in quite readily. So during times of metabolic stress, it seems to work. Now, the argument is, how do I know I'm going to be stressed tomorrow? How do I know I'm going to have a bad night's sleep? You don't. So that's why I think taking a higher daily dose might be a safety but the days you're like, oh, I didn't sleep at all, and I have a big presentation later, or me as a professor teaching four classes a term, I've really <laughs> increased the amount. I would say I might be the most saturated person on the planet because I've been taking creatine for decades. Uh, there's no reason to stop. Uh, we can talk about cycling or, or continuous. Um, but I'm even taking more in hope that it's getting into my brain. Again, 20 years ago, it was just muscle. Then we've evolved into the bone, and now we're getting into the brain. And I think a university student's midterm week, final exam, staying up all night, cramming, maybe creatine could really improve their ability to score better on tests. And when you look at the mental uh, fatiguing uh, studies, that's when creatine seems to work. After you've done a whole bunch of fatiguing exercises, or sorry, taking creatine before, it really speeds up your ability to maintain memory and cognition. And uh, we can talk about neural filament, um, things in the brain, or BDNF, and and that's some of the mechanisms primarily in rodent. So there is some mechanisms showing that creatine is decreasing oxidative stress or really having some uh, potential for neuronal health, which now you think of Alzheimer's, dementia, neurodegenerative diseases. So I'm super excited to see where this is going for the next 20 or 30 years. Yeah. 